ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hear that? It's the sound of a mighty American Airlines flagship taking off. You know, being an American Airlines pilot is an exciting job. And now, thanks to Cheerios, you too can share in that fun. Because inside every specially marked package of Cheerios, you'll now find a free American Airlines air travel game. Yes, a free airplane game for you and your friends. Complete with instructions, four airplane playing pieces, a spinner, and two playing boards. You're the pilot in this exciting air travel game. And you play on a real American Airlines system map that adds to the fun. On the back, you'll find another paper game board with lots of important information every American Airlines pilot must know. So how about it? You be the pilot. Get your complete American Airlines air travel game today, free in Cheerios. Look for the special Cheerios package with a flying airplane on front. Supplies are limited, so hurry. Ask for Cheerios today, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Tom Safford and old Ned rode the trail toward Stockton at a leisurely pace. Tom was about 22 years of age. His father had owned a small ranch near Pecos, and at first had prospered. But a gang of outlaws had continually rustled his cattle, and finally, on their last raid, they had killed Mr. Safford. Tom swore to take up their trail until he found them and avenged the death of his father. Old Ned, his father's foreman, had begged to go with him. As the two men rode along, Ned was saying, Hey, Jiminy, Tom, I still think you should have left things to the law. We're sure now that the head of that murdering gang is Burley Hodge. We know he and his gang of gunslingers headed toward Stockton. They may have holed up in that vicinity, and then again, they may not. But no matter how far they go, I'm going after them. You can turn back whenever you want. No, sir, I'm not too old to handle a gun, so I'm sticking with you, son. Good for you, Ned. We'll stop in Stockton tonight, and maybe we'll get some news of Burley and his gang. Now let's get a move on. Get up. Get up now. That night in their camp in a secluded hollow near Stockton, Burley Hodge and two of his men were making plans in a shack Burley used as his headquarters. I tell you, boys, there's mighty good pickings around Stockton. We'll rustle some cattle now and then and pull a few hold-ups before we move on. Uh, here's Buck. He can tell us what's doing in town. Yeah, that's right. I can. Somebody's in town looking for us, Burley. Well, that's not news. Lots of hombres are looking for us. Yeah, yeah, I know. But the hombre I mean is somebody who trailed us from Pecos. Old man Safford, son. Safford? Hey, that's the name of the rancher you shot a couple of weeks ago, Burley. Yeah. So that son of his has trailed us down this way, huh? Yeah, well, that's going to be just too bad for him. What's he look like, Buck? Uh, tall and rangy. Must be in his early 20s. He brought an old coot along with him. That gabby old fellow worked for the Sappers. <laughs> so we're supposed to get worried about a young maverick and an old cowpuncher like those two. Huh? Safford sworn to get you, Burley, for killing his old man. He means business, or he wouldn't have followed us down this way. Sure he does. Any other news in town? Well, the sheriff's away until tomorrow, if that's news. Yeah, it is news. I suppose you saw Safford and the old geezer in the cafe. That's right. I'd get outside and tell the others to get ready to ride. <laughs> Where are we going? Yeah. What are we going to do? <laughs> we're going to hold up the cafe in town tonight. What's more, we're going to grab young Safford and bring him out here with us. <laughs> Later that night, Tom Safford and Ned were still at the cafe. While Tom stood by silently, old Ned, who always became talkative in a crowd, was telling of his earlier days in the far west. Yes, sir. Why, fact is, even today, an hombre most of you have heard about, uh, 
Lone Ranger calls on me when he needs help. Yes, sir. You don't say. Gosh, he helps the Lone Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> now, hold on there. It's about time you stop telling those tall stories. You don't know the Lone Ranger any more than I do. Now, Tom, don't tell me you don't believe me. I don't mind these hombres laughing if they want to act ignorant. Hey, hey hold up. Say a gang of outlaws. All right, reach all of you. First time ready to make a move for a gun, get some bullets. Right, right, get over there. Right them up, boys. Take the cash. Right. right, get over there. You get the dough from the cafe scene. Right. Hey, Tom, that's Burley Hodge and his gang. My hundred last we've caught up with them. <laughs> you hear that, fellas? This old codger says at last they caught up with them. <laughs> I reckon you're Tom Sapper. What if I am? Well, now that you caught up with me, like your weather-beaten old sidekick says, what? you ought to have the chance to have your say. Who is weather beaten? Shut up, man. Get all that guns, boys. Yeah, we'll I'll take yours, Sapper. I heard you were here looking for me. Thought I'd save you the trouble. We'll meet again, Hodge. Uh, you don't think we're going to part company right away, do you? After the trip you made down here? You're coming right along with me, so as we can be together. Hey, if you think we'd go any place with a murdering coyote like you, you... Shut up! If I had my gun, Hodge, I'd... But sh- you haven't. Ready to leave, boys? All right, Savage, come on. We're taking you to our camp. Get moving. The Lone Ranger and Toto had arrived in the hills that night not far from Stockton. They made camp, started a campfire, and prepared a late supper. After you get a few supplies from town, I... Silver's giving a warning, Toto. Uh, maybe someone near camp. Get up. We may have to use our guns. Uh, Reach, both of you! I've got you covered! He's behind us, Toto. Sounds like an old man. All right, mister, we're reaching. Show yourself. By thunder, you must be a couple of the gang camp and here to stop anyone who might try to follow them to their hideout. We not outlaws. That's right, we're not. I see that mask you're wearing, mister. That's proof enough that you are. But him shaken, Kimosabi. Him old man. Yes, I know. You had better put away that gun and talk this over. No, no, I'm keeping you covered. You better stop edging my way or I'll, I'll shoot. We're uh, two against one, mister, and you seem to be alone. I, I said stand still. By thunder, I'll show you. I'll take that gun. Oh, hey, let go. Hey. I have it, Toto. Uh, oh. <laughs> Me figure him not oh. shoot straight. No, no, hold on. <laughs> Maybe I am a bit shaky when I try to aim a gun, but if you hadn't moved so fast, I'd have plugged you. Maybe. But why is an old man like you going around at night shooting at people? Just take me to the head man if you want me to answer your questions. Maybe I'm old and my aim ain't what it used to be, but by Jiminy, if Burley Hodge does harm to Tom Sapper... Now, wait a minute. We may be able to help you if we get the facts. Uh, Help me? Yes, but you must trust us. Trust you? Yes. Here's your gun. I don't want it. You mean you're taking the chance of giving back my gun? Well... We not take much chance. You just listen to me, Injun. When I was a young and I was plenty fast with a shooting iron. Why, one time when I was helping the Lone Ranger, he says to me, he says, Ned, he says... <laughs> you... The uh, Lone Ranger wasn't around when you were a uh, youngin', my friend. Well, uh, oh, I meant I was helping him just a few years ago. Uh, but I was still a crack shot then, and he says to me... <laughs> I, I suppose he carried bullets like these. Uh, yep, yep, this is a silver bullet, and that's just the kind my friend, the Lone Ray. Holy smoke. Where'd you get this? From my belt. I have many more like it right here. Then you must... <laughs> him, him Lone Ranger. Oh, great day. After me saying that oh, I... Forget it, Ned. Oh. We'll be friends from now on. Oh. Now, uh... Tell us about Burley Hodge and about that fellow Tom Safford you mentioned. In his own rambling fashion, Ned told the Lone Ranger and Toto about Tom's father and about what happened that night in town at the cafe. When he finally finished, the Lone Ranger said, Ned, uh, Toto and I came down here to find Burley Hodge and his gang. Was that right? You did? (laughs) Well, by thunder, now he'll get what's coming to him. It won't be as easy as all that, Ned. At least we know he and his gang are hiding out nearby. It's too dark to pick up the trail now. We'll start at dawn. Maybe we'll be able to find their hideout, Tonto. Ah. What, what, what about me? By Jiminy, you can't just ride off at daybreak and leave me behind. We'll take you with us at dawn. Oh, fine. Maybe after this you can tell a story that will be the truth. We'll not give up until we find Burley Hodge and his gang. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, now that school's out, I bet your whole day is spent in the fresh outdoors. 
And that's when a delicious snack like a big slice of chocolate devil's food cake and a cold glass of milk tastes extra good. So easy with Betty Crocker devil's food cake mix, you can bake it yourself. The finest ingredients are right in the package. Ingredients like famous softest silk cake flour, pure vegetable shortening, and rich chocolate flavoring. You simply add water and two fresh eggs, beat and bake for a perfect cake every time. In fact, Betty Crocker guarantees a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Absolutely perfect or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota for your money back. And why not have Betty Crocker Devil's Food Cake with any one of your favorite ice creams? Ask Mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker Cake Mix on hand. And someday soon, why not bake up a cake for her? Now, to continue, at dawn, the Lone Ranger and Toto with Ned rode to the edge of town to pick up the outlaw's trail. As they approached the outskirts of Stockton, a horseman who was riding toward them suddenly swung around and galloped back into town. My mask scared that fellow. <laughs> Look at him go. Lickety split back into town. He must have thought we were outlaws, sure enough. Isn't that right? Maybe we able to pick up trail uh, gang here, Kimasabi. Sure, they rode out of town right along here. You can see the hoof marks they left. Good. We'll follow them and hope they lead us to the hideout. Come on, Get them up here. Come on. Meantime, the man who had ridden back into town stopped in front of the sheriff's home. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you coming here this early for, mister? Has the sheriff come back yet? No, not yet. But he told me he'd be back soon after daybreak. I'm expecting him most any time now. That's why I'm up this early. Say, what's wrong now? Well, I just saw three of the outlaws riding toward town. One of them is masked. Great day. Maybe they came back to commit another robbery. Where'd you see him, mister? Just beyond the edge of town, the south. Well, now, as soon as my husband and his deputies get here, I'll tell them about it. Then they can go hunt for him. I'll go round up some men to form a posse and be ready to ride with the sheriff when he gets here. All right. You tell him to meet in front of the sheriff's office. I'll send my husband right up there as soon as he arrives. All right, ma'am. Thank you. Get up there. <laughs> The Lone Ranger, with Toto and Ned, followed the outlaw's trail to the bank of a creek. There, they drew rain. Oh, oh Scott. Oh, oh, fella. Yeah. Oh. Silly big fella. Well, they covered their trail by riding in the shallow water, Toto. Ah. I'll follow one bank. You and Ned follow the other. Look for any sign that might indicate they left the water. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Get him Slowly, the three men rode along the creek banks, gazing intently at the ground. They had gone about a mile when Tonto called out to the Lone Ranger, who was on the opposite bank. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, 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 oh there. Kimasabi, me find sign here. Good. Come on, Silver. Come on, boy. Oh, Silver, who? Tonto says he sees signs, but dagnabbit, all I can see is smooth rock along there. Well, what do you see, Tonto? Well, look there, Kimasabi. Me see faint scratch on rock. It lighter than rest of rock. That mean it new. Me think scratch made by horseshoe. Yes, I think you're right. It would be the smart thing to do to leave the creek here where this flat rocky surface runs along the bank. Ah, flat rock surface go back only short way. We go look, maybe find tracks where earth joins rock. All right, let's go look. Come, 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 Plenty of hoof marks now. Yes, we've found their trail again. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on, fella. Come on. A short time after the masked man and his friends had been seen near the outskirts of town, the sheriff and his deputies arrived home. When he learned the news, the sheriff immediately started out with a posse, trailing the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Ned. Meanwhile, the trail the three men were following ran along a dried-up creek bed. As they approached a bend, the great horse Silver suddenly lifted his head, then gave a low whinny. <laughs> then the big stallion stopped of his own accord. Silver's giving us warning. Oh, 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 oh. Silver must have caught the scent of men and horses. Easy, steady, big fella. You 
to wait here. I'll do a bit of scouting. The Lone Ranger cautiously made his way to a high point from which he could look ahead. Soon he returned to the others. A short distance beyond the bend are two big boulders, forming a small pass through which the trail runs. You think maybe someone there on guard? Yes, I do. Ned, I have a plan. Would you be afraid to take a risk? Not if it'll help get Tom back. No, sir. At the big rock, the outlaw buck had taken over as lookout alone as soon as day had broken. He heard the hoofbeats of Ned's horse and looked around the rock. Hey, it's the old coodles with Seffert in the cafe. Now in thunder did he find our trail. All right, stop where you are and reach, mister. I'm reaching as high as I can get, mister. Don't shoot. Get off that horse and walk over here. Yep. Oh, it's a sure thing now. I might have known there'd be a lookout someplace. I'll take that gun. We'll get our horses and I'll take you to Burley. Burley and Tom Safford both looked up in surprise when Buck brought Ned into the shack. Ned, why'd he bring you here? Buck, you know me to tell me that old windbag picked up our trail all the way to the big rock. He sure did, Burley. Sit down. Yeah, yeah sure. Thanks. Well, it's mighty good to see you again, Tom. Ned, you shouldn't have tried to trail him. What I want to know is how he did it. Speak up, you. Anyone ride with you? Uh, stop being nice now, Buck, bringing someone in here. Hey, Ned, who you caught, Buck? He must have put up quite a fight. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It's been shaking like a leak ever, ever since I stopped here. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. I'm trying to get this mangy geezer to answer a question. Now answer me. Did you come alone? Now, let me think a minute. Uh, yep, I rode out of town all alone, Mr. Hodge, and so help me, that's the truth. Are you trying to tell us a weak-eyed old fool like you picked up our trail at the place where we left the creek? Tell me the truth. Well, oh, say, that hurt. Hey, Copper, I'll wait, give you... Wait, hold on. I, I'll tell you. Ned, acting frightened, had looked all around. He had caught a glimpse of Toto at one of the windows, and to hold the outlaw's attention, he began talking rapidly. He was like this. I was wishing for the help of my friend, that masked man I talked about. Well, what do you think happened? After I left town and rode a couple of miles, I ran plumb into him and a friend of his. Yes, sir. Well, they heard all about you being around and taking Tom prisoner and all, so they said they'd help me to trail you. Ned, don't start those stories again. Tell him you managed to find the trail and be done with it. I think the old coot's local. Tom, I'm... I'm plumb surprised that you want me to lie about it. Yes, sir, like I Hold said... Hold or not, I'm not going to let him make a fool out of me. I'll put a bullet in him right now. Stop! Oh, Someone shot through the window. Well, he shot in the leg. Gun staff the old man. Please, shot on you. Hey, look. The man's man like he Stop said... Stop your guns. Not me, I'll fix you. Quiet! Oh, my arm. Hey, this is a redskin at the window. We better drop our guns, Slim. Now, uh, the others will be here in a minute. Then it'll be our turn. Looks like the others are busy with the sheriff and the posse. Me untie, young fella. I'll pick up their guns. There. Gosh, in all this time I thought Ned was telling tall tales what? about a masked man. Now, Tom, however could you think such a thing? <laughs> he told the truth this time, as you see, Tom. Ned's a brave man. Keep your guns on, Ned. Drop your gun, masked man. No, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. He isn't one of them, Sheriff. He and the engine helped me capture Burley Hodge and these others here who were holding Tom Safford. That's right, Sheriff. We did help Ned. You helped Ned? That's a good one. He risked his life coming here to their hideout alone. We followed him here, but we purposely left a clear trail for the Sheriff and the posse to follow. The masked man and the Indian are friends, Sheriff. They saved both our lives. That's Burley Hodge there on the floor. He was about to kill Ned, and I know I would have been next. I reckon if they did that, they're friends, all right. I wondered why they were so careless leaving such a clear trail, too. But I sure don't savvy that mask. Oh, forget the mask. My friend Todd and I came here to Stockton purposely to trail Burley's gang. A lot of the credit goes to Ned. <laughs> Burley and his men are wanted for murder in Pecos. That's right. They killed my father. Oh, they'll hang for that. And the West will be far better off without him. You're right about that, Sheriff. There's no place in the West for vicious men like them. Well, Todd and I'll leave now. We'll follow the trail from here to Pecos. Adios. 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 Goodbye, my friends. Maybe we'll be together again sometime. Goodbye, Ned. And take care of Tom. <laughs> well, you hear that, son? He said for me to take care of you. Yes, sir. You, you can't beat friends like that. Hey, look, old man. Would you mind telling us just who these friends of yours are? Why, great day I thought all of you knew right off that the masked man is the one I was telling about last night. Sure, that hombre's the Lone Ranger. Oh, Lone Ranger. Yeah.
The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.